Hey guys, welcome to MB Tech Talker. My name's Matt. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up a virtual Palo Alto next generation firewall using VMware ESXi and how to configure the basic management settings required to access the web UI. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell to get notified every time I post a new video. Okay, so firstly, we need to um, visit the Palo Alto customer support portal so we can download the uh, Pano SVM series software. So you need to head over to https colon forward slash forward slash support dot palo alto networks dot com um, and this is the page you should see. If you don't have an account then you can sign up and create an account here. Once you've verified your account then um, you can go ahead and sign in. So um, click in the sign in button um, and then log into uh, into your account. Um, um, once you're within the uh, support portal, um, we need to be looking in the menu on the left hand side um, and uh, in the underneath the update section, there is the software updates. So click on the software updates. Um, and you should see a uh, a list of all the software available um, but because I'm using ESXi I'm only interested in the ESXi um, Palo S uh, file so what we're going to use there's a, a filter by here at the moment all selected by default so I'm just going to use this to um, filter only on Palo S for VM series base images so this shortens it quite dramatically um, as you can see there's software dated back to uh, 2012 um, right to the current day uh, which is 2019 I'm going to be using the 8.1.0 file in this um, video for this tutorial so you can go ahead and download this file and save it to a location that you can find easily for the next step okay so what we're going to do next is open up the vSphere web client um, this is where we're going to um, import the OVA file in and uh, provision the uh, Palo Alto VM series firewall. So in this tutorial and for the rest of my videos, I will be using this server um, for any configuration for any VMs. So what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to right click on on this server and we're going to go to deploy OVF template and then we're going to select or choose the PAVM ESX 8.1.0 OVA file that we downloaded earlier and then we're just going to click next um, give it a name it can be anything as long as it's unique so I'm just going to put demo on the end of that it's going to be uh, provisioned to uh, the um, to my tech lab data center. So, next, um, I've got two ESXi hosts. Um, the second one, so dot one one, is the one that's going to be used. So, click next on that. It's just validating the the template just to make sure everything's um, configured correctly. Um, and now there's a review and it tells you the size of the disk, what the size of the disks are going to be if you choose a thin provision disk or a thick provision disk. Um, click next. Um, I always thick provision uh, my disks, um, so I'm just going to leave that as it is. Um, my Synology uh, NAS is already um, highlighted or it's selected, so this is where my uh, data store is this is where the vm will be stored so click next on that one um, i'm going to attach this um, the first nick which is the the management nick to my management network um, so this is ready to complete now just reviewing it so this all looks good this is what i expect and then just finish so now at the bottom you can see it's imported the OVF package 
um, and it's going to deploy the OVF, OVF template. Um, this will take a little bit of time, normally about five minutes. Uh, when it reaches 100%, then we're good to go. So while that's doing that, um, I'm going to give you a bit of background on my lab setup. Um, as I said before, I've got uh, two ESXi hosts. Um, the second host highlighted here is the um, is my default lab um, ESXi host. Um, and I've got pretty much, I think there's over 20 VMs here that I use periodic periodically. Um, and not all at once, but, um, you know, I do have a quite a few turned on. So let's have a chat about the uh, virtual networking. So on the um, on the tabs up here, you can see I've got configure highlighted um, and then underneath the networking section, um, I've got virtual switches highlighted. Uh, and here is a, uh, a list of uh, V switches from zero to five. So that's six switches that I've got available. You can add more. Um, v switch was the, the first switch that was created. Um, and this is where the majority of my VMs are connected to. So what we have here is uh, V switch zero, um, uh, a physical NIC coming out of the out of the ESXi server, which goes into uh, my Cisco switch. And then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six port groups. And inside those port groups are virtual machine, virtual NICs. So when we uh, connect this uh, Palo Alto uh, virtual firewall to this V switch, um, the management NIC uh, will be plugged into here. Um, it's being tagged with uh, VLAN three um and then as it uh, leaves the uh, v switch um, it goes across uh, a physical uh, ethernet connection which is an aso 2.1 q trunk which carries uh, multiple vlans in and out of um, the um, hypervisor so that allows me to have multiple vlans um, assigned to different vms and gives a lot of flexibility so um, I will, um, I've got a diagram uh, I like to go through and um, explain to you uh, how this is going to be uh, configured. Um, and we'll, we'll take a look at that now. Here's a diagram. I've, I've taken the, um, a screen print of uh, my uh, virtual networking from my ESXi host. And then I've just added a few network devices um, to do to kind of demonstrate how things are connected. So as I said, when the when we're configuring the um, Palo Alto um, VM, um, we attach the uh, the first NIC. So the Palo Alto can have ten NICs connected um, to a, a virtual uh, to a hypervisor, um, and um, basically the first NIC in the list within the um, VM uh, will always be the manager interface. So what we will be doing is um, plugging in, let's say this is the manager interface here. Um, and this will be plugged into uh, the management network here like this. So that will give us um, basic access um, to the web UI. And then at a later date, we will be able to add um, some, some other um, virtual NICs uh, from the Palo Alto to the V switch. So let's take, for instance, we're going to be um, connecting out to uh, the internet. So we can, we'll be going to the lab uh, internet um, and then, and then also a LAN. So let's say this is going to be the LAN and that could be going to here. Um, and then maybe later on, we're going to be adding a a DMZ so we'll be able to you know add it to let's just say uh, a DMZ to this VLAN here so it gives us a lot of flexibility so um, we'll be able to do lots of configurations um, and different kind of scenarios by using the virtual networking so yeah but that's how the, the Palo will be configured um, um, you know the, the, the virtual um, 
network connections will be configured. Um, and then obviously the the actual hypervisor or the server itself um, has a, uh, a connection to a Cisco switch, which is a trunk port. And then this goes into um, either physical devices here or to a router, uh, which in turn goes out to the internet. So we've got a, a mix of uh, a virtual environment and also uh, a physical environment bridging the two. So we've got lots of possibilities, lots of different configurations. We can do lots of examples and lots of tutorials. So um, I hope that clears kind of uh, clears it up um, and makes it a little bit more easier to to visualize. OK, so um, let's get rid of that. Um, as I said, this is now being completed. Uh, the VM has been uh, it has been provisioned now, so it's successful. Um, it's now in the uh, in the list here. And if we right click on this and go to edit settings, we should now be able to see what we've got. So talking about the virtual uh, network adapters, um, it's provisioned two by default. Um, it has assigned both NICs to my management network. Um, but for this uh, tutorial, um, we're only going to need one. Um, so we can disconnect that one um, and remove it just for the time being. Um, and that, that basically finishes the configuration. Okay, so once the Palo Alto VM has successfully booted up, um, it's time to access the command line and um, verify the management interface's IP address and check connectivity just to make sure we've got some IP connectivity. So you do that quite simply by selecting the VM from the menu and uh, clicking on this black uh, window which launches the vSphere console uh, directly to the Paolo. Um, this acts as if you were plugging a, a physical console cable into a physical device. Um, uh, it's exactly the same. Um, it's just that you don't have the faff of doing that, which is great. So from here, you use the default Palo credentials, which is admin, uh, admin. Um, and as you see, you get a, uh, a warning to say that your password is set um, using the default admin credentials. Um, obviously, a, in a production environment, you would change this. Uh, because of security reasons you need to lock this down um, but in a lab environment you know this is you know, just it's acceptable so um, so what we're going to do is um, verify the IP address of the management interface um, by issuing the show interface uh, management uh, and there you can see that the interface has picked up uh, an IP address uh, and this is from my internal DHCP server on the management network um, and then, so what we want to do is next text um, test uh, connectivity. Uh, we're ping the default gateway, so we'll do ping host uh, 10.10.3.251. Uh, that looks good. Uh, so we can control C out of that. Next thing we're going to do is configure the interface, the management interface, to have a static IP. So you type configure, and we're going to do set. Um, uh, device config system IP address and make an IP address out so 10.10.3.88 netmask 255.255.255.0 and space default gateway which is 10.10.3.251 then DNS so that's DNS hyphen settings servers uh, primary 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 secondary 8.8.4.4 uh, .4. uh, hit return then I'm going to change the um, the management interface from a DHCP client to a static um, interface type so we do that by um, set device config uh, system type static hit return and then what we do is you issue the commit command and that will um, 
commit the um, changes directly to the Paolo. Uh, we have to wait for this to get to 100%. Uh, when, when that's done, we can verify the management um, address again, confirm connectivity, and then fingers crossed, we'll be able to go to the web UI and have a look at the dashboard. So, right, so let's do um, exit out of configure. And then we're going to do show um, interface management. Um, as you can see, there's the uh, IP address that I set. So there's our static IP address. So now we're going to confirm connectivity once more. So ping 10.10.3.251. Uh, .10 oh, no. So that's ping host 10.10.3.251. Uh, .10 and there we go. Perfect. Um, so that looks good. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to open up another tab. We're going to go directly to the IP address of um, the static IP address that we assigned by going HTTPS 10.10.3.88. And looking good. So proceed to that. And we get the um, web UI um, login page. So admin, admin and then log in. Okay, it's complaining about the default credentials again. And here we go. So fingers crossed, looking good. And there we go. So uh, successful management configuration. We've got full access to the web UI. So here's the welcome page tells you all about the uh, the releases and new features that's in the 8.1 version so you can you can leave that and tick there and you can read that at your leisure it's going to close that but first glances this is uh, the Palo Alto next generation firewall web UI you've got the dashboard general information system resources who's logged in logs configuration logs um, and then there's uh, some other tabs along here, which um, I'm going to save for another video. Um, so that's it for today's video. Um, so thanks for watching. Um, over the next coming weeks, I will be uploading more videos um, where I'll be sharing more content about Palo Alto Firewall features and technologies um, and how to configure them in tutorials like this. If you like this video, um, I'm sure you know what to do by now, but just in case you don't, please hit that like button um, and share with your friends. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell to get notified every single time I post a new video. If you have any video content you want me to create, put them in the comments below. Uh, I love to um, get your feedback on any aspect of my channel. Please keep watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.